All right, Shalom. Once again, I'm thankful, I'm grateful to be able to come out here to preach and to prophesy unto my people, being you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. According to the Holy Bible, you are the biblical Israelites if you go back to those people on your paternal line, your father's genetic line. Some of our people may look like these other nations out here, but if your spirit resonates with this word, you are indeed an Israelite, all right? I don't come out here on my own to speak my own words, but the spirit of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai has moved me to come out here once again, and I'm grateful to be able to do so. But before I go on with my lesson, as always, I have to give all thanks and praises unto our power, all right? The power of Israel, not the power of any other nation. And what's his name? Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Wawar Kakwadash. Peace, blessings, much respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, on down to the rest of the elders who rule well within Israel. Salutations to the hopeful elect throughout the four corners of this whole entire earth, no matter where, whom they may be, or what they may look like, pushing out this purified truth to the rest of the church who believe as well. You men who may not be teachers or prophets, you women, sons and daughters as well. And the water to Yahweh Shai. Because without him enduring and going to that cross for the nation of Israel and the nation of Israel alone, none of this would even be possible whatsoever. Okay? And that's just the truth of the matter. Let's touch on the book of 2 Peter's. This is the book of 2 Peter's chapter 3 and verse 1. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you in both which I stir your pure minds by way of remembrance. So through this word, our mind is being put back into remembrance because we once knew this, but we fell away. OK, and coming back due to reincarnation, we have to relearn what we already knew. So through this Bible, through this word, it's almost like breadcrumbs that are leading back to your crib, so to speak, just in case you was to get lost. So this word is leading us back to who we are leading us back to our destination. Verse 2, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts, the majority of people are walking after their own lust. The majority of people are doing what the hell they want to do. And then they get angry when the Lord comes and brings judgment upon them. Okay? Seeing that most people do what they want to do, they do what's right in their own eyes, they are showing they are enemies of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Okay? A lot of men on the sideline mocking us, whether you're driving by, whether you're at home, okay? But a lot of that has kind of become more low-key and uh, under the radar because the Lord has amplified prophecy so much that a lot of you scoffers had to shut up and acknowledge that, hey, maybe those guys might be on to... Uh, 
some truth. Maybe they know what they're talking about as much as I want to deny it because the Lord's word is going out and this word is undeniable. And all you gainsayers, you are not going to be able to uh, fight against the power of heaven and earth. You will lose every time. So you will be wise to listen to the words of the man of the Lord because the Lord set us up. Okay. Verse four and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. My great grandmother, her great grandmother, my, my uncle's cousin's cousin's cousin. Everybody has been talking about the return of who you call Jesus Christ. And he hasn't returned yet. He ain't coming. If he was coming, he would have came by now. That's the mentality of a lot of people because the majority of you Israelites, you lack faith. You don't have the spirit in you. Okay? And seeing that the Lord is soon to return, you are going to be proven that you are a fool. You are a complete idiot, man. All right? The Lord is coming back soon. The one you know is Jesus Christ is coming back soon and he's going to destroy America. He's going to destroy all you wicked people that uphold this society as well. Okay? Including the king of America being Esau Edom. All right? Let's go forward. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? Where is he at? He ain't here yet. That's what a lot of you mockers say. Rather out, loud, rather out louder in your hearts. For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Things have been the same as they've always been. People come, people go. The return of the Lord has not happened yet. I ain't trying to hear that. That's what people say. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of the power, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. So what you have to understand is that through the word of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, everything was created. But yet you doubt the return of Yahweh Shai. It was through Yahweh Shai that everything was created. But you doubt his return? He actually walked the earth. He actually performed miracles. All right? And he's going to give his men power to perform miracles. A lot of you people who are sick, who are handicapped, okay? The time will come that if you believe in who you call Jesus Christ, his name is Yahweh Shai, if you believe, you could be healed from your sickness, man. That's the time we're coming into. We're coming into the time where the Lord is going to allow his men to raise up the dead. The Lord is going to allow his men to be fed during famine. Overall, his men are going to be delivered up out of this place because this place is going down, man. And a lot of you people, you have a problem with the words of the Heavenly Father. You have a problem with masculinity, but that's all right. You're going to be destroyed and all of your effeminate beliefs. All right. Let's go forward. Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. So what happened going back to the days of Noah? The earth was flooded. Noah, his wife, his sons and their wives were the only ones that were delivered. The rest of the earth died through a great flood. But another flood is coming. You thought it was over? All right, the Lord made a promise that he would not flood the earth with water again. That was his promise to mankind. That's what the rainbow represents. Okay? But because of the wicked's rule, he altered the meaning of the rainbow. You think it represents sodomites. We can't even wear rainbow color clothing because you would think we uphold sodomy. Okay? The rainbow represents the covenant that the Lord made with mankind, that he wouldn't destroy this world with uh, water. But he is going to destroy parts of the earth 
including all of America, with fire though. Okay? That's going to be the new judgment that's coming. It rained water before, now it's going to rain fire this time. Fire and water. Two elements that could be used to purify. When you take a shower, what are you doing? You're being purified by water. I mean, yeah, the water's defiled, but you get the point. Okay? If you have an object, let's say it was laid out on the street. You had a piece of metal laid out on the street, and you put it under fire. You put it under fire to kill off bacteria, to sanitize it. Because fire is also a sanitizer or a purifier just as water is. The Lord purified the earth with water the first time. But now he's going to use fire to do some purifying, whether you believe it or not. And that's what the nuclear missiles were created for. It was created to waste the so-called Edom or the so-called white men who are the biblical Edomites and the rest of you evil people who are down with them. Okay? Let's go on. But the heavens and the earth which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire, against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So before, what happened? A flood came going back to the time of Noah with water. But this time, it's going to be a flood of fire. I'm going to say something, man. Now, in my last teaching... I spoke on a spiritual uh, situation that I had in my life about a dream. Okay? Now, check this out, right? A couple days after that, well, maybe a few days, three, three, four days after that, I don't know, man. You know, my memory's not as great as I would like it to be. I came across, I came across this book at my job in the, in the uh, locker room. It was sitting on this bench. Okay, now hear me out. It was a book sitting on this bench. Now, before I say the title of this book, the reason why I'm speaking on it is a couple things. This verse made me think of something that's making me bring up what I'm talking about, and I'm going to get to that in a second. Okay, now hear me out. I saw this book. It was in the uh, locker room at my job and it was sitting on the bench. It was just sitting there like somebody had left it there by accident. Okay. When I came back to the locker room later on in my work night, it was still sitting there. And I laid eyes on the title of the book. And when I locked eyes on the title of the book, you know, it was in my mind that it was a biblical reference, but I couldn't put two and two together at the time. In my mind, I was thinking, what's that in the Apocrypha? Was that in the Maccabees? Who was called this specific title? Now, hear me out now. Hear me out. You got to be spiritual. I was listening to a video. I'm going to get back to that. I was listening to a video of Elder Apostle Gabar going into humility. You know, what's the point of trying to exalt yourself? We're not out here representing ourselves, man. We're out here representing Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. We didn't give ourselves this truth. So who are we to brag or boast? He had brought up something, right? And it was in my mind all day. And while this was on my mind all day, he brought it up. Dang, I just seeing numbers again, man. Y'all would think I'm crazy, all right? And you could think I'm crazy. That's fine. What I'm doing, I already look crazy. In his video, he said, Yahweh Shai used humor when he called James and John the sons of thunder. Okay? Check this out. That book. That I, locked, that I locked eyes on in the locker room. You know what it was called? It was called Sons of Thunder. Now check this out. At this particular time of me locking eyes 
on the book, I didn't put two and two together yet. This is what I'm getting at. I was doing some studying and I was reading. I randomly came across Sons of Thunder in the scriptures and it explained how James and John were called Sons of Thunder, right? So this is after explaining my dream of being in a temple and some narrator explained to me this is where uh, the disciples fled. Okay? This is where the disciples fled to. Days later, I see this book. It's named Sons of Thunder. I didn't even put two and two together that two of the disciples were called Sons of Thunder. James and John. I had a vision a long time ago of what I'm reading right now. I had a vision of a lake of fire, just like John did, who was called a son of thunder. Now, I'm not saying I'm John. I mean, hell, if I was, that would be cool, you know? I can't say I am or I'm not, but I've been going crazy because I've been pondering. I had this vision. I was in the sky, and it looked like I was at a doorway. I didn't look behind me, so I don't know what was behind me, but I assume as I look back, I was in a chariot. I was standing at a doorway in the air, and as far as my eyes could see, everything was fire. I didn't see not one building. I didn't see not one house. I didn't see not one tree. All I saw was fire elevated at a level so high you could see nothing else but the sky. All you saw was burning fire and the sky if you were to be in this, this dream I had. That was the same vision that John had who was called a son of thunder. After I had that vision and I explained it. Okay? And I remember there was this, this guy randomly. He asked me, are you one of the 12 disciples? I said, no. I kind of giggled. Little does he know, some years ago, his brother came out here. He was a Muslim. His brother came out here with some other guy trying to challenge the scriptures. And I was yelling at him. I, you know, at that time, man, I, I had a different spirit, man. Yelling at the top of my lungs, chewing them out, letting them know the Lord was going to destroy him. A week later, this guy goes to prison because he tried to blow up some building and got caught just a week after running into me not knowing sometime down the line i'd run into his brother i'd work with his brother and his brother would question if i'm one of the 12 disciples not even having biblical conversation now it made me ponder because we know the prophets are back and know it doesn't matter but if the Lord is talking to us, we got to listen, man. I'm not going to say I'm John, the revelator. I'm not going to say I'm one of the 12, but I'll say it'd be cool if I am. Okay. Having that vision, which is what I'm reading now, is the same vision John had. And when I locked eyes on that book, it said, Sons of Thunder, I didn't even correlate that with the 12 disciples. I didn't even correlate that at all with the 12 disciples. Until I was studying, and I just happened to come across that, not even looking for it. The Lord led me to it. And then in the video, Elder Apostle Gabor spoke on it. How Yahweh Shai called James and John. How he called James and John, Sons of Thunder because of their zeal okay that's crazy man and it goes deeper than that but you know let's keep the lesson going i don't want to keep speaking on it but the lord is showing brothers you know remember the scripture says uh matter of fact let me hold that thought right quick i love this truth man you know we'll find out 
who so it don't really matter right now. But if the Lord's tapping on you and he's, you feel like he's trying to tell you something, don't ignore it. Don't let someone else take your crown. OK, hell, if you're going through the same thing I'm going through, then maybe I'm tripping. But as far as I can see it, it's rare events that just it, it's crazy to me, man. It's crazy to me. OK. You know, in like another small thing, uh, John and James, they were brothers. Um, their dad was a fisherman. The only picture that I have with my dad is him with the necklace wearing an anchor. OK. And any fisherman in those times would know about an anchor. Everything is spiritual, right? Now, check this out. See if I can find it. I know it's in Isaiah. Bear with me, brothers, and you sisters out there, whoever may be watching. This is Isaiah 51 and 9 because certain brothers will say, well, we don't know who we are right now. Blah, blah, blah. The Lord going to do what he wants to do. If the Lord wants to reveal something to you, he'll reveal it to you. And that's one thing about men. They'll try to take your spotlight. It can't be you. It could be somebody else, but it can't be you because you're, you're lowly in this truth because you don't have a, a popular name. It can't be you. Right. Anyway, it's not important, though, but you're you're don't miss my point. OK, I'm not trying to be vain about this. This is Isaiah chapter 51 and verse nine. Awake, awake, put on strength, O arm of the Lord. Awake as in the ancient days and the generations of old. Art thou not it that hath cut Rahab and wounded the dragon? So this was told to Isaiah. Isaiah wouldn't have known that before then. But he had just felt out at that particular time that he was this particular person in his past life. So the Lord can tell us who we are if that's what he wants to do. Through spiritual signs and various things. Now again, I'm not saying I'm one of the twelve, man. OK, but the Lord has put it in my mind to where I hope I could be. How about that? I hope I am. OK, now you might say I'm bugging out. That's OK. That's all right. That's all right. You know. Brothers might say, oh, he got demons on him. Oh, he think he one of the disciples now. You always got some hating ass brothers somewhere, man. OK. You always got some scoffers running their mouth. Let's go back to Second Peter's, but let's go to two. Second Peter's. Second Peter's chapter two and verse two. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. So we bring out the words of Yahweh by Shemiah was shy and people speak evil of it. People have a lot of foul things to say about the men of the Lord. People have a lot of foul things to say about our garments, about the sign. OK, about our beard, maybe not being lined up, not lining up our head. OK, talking like a man, not talking like an effeminate wimp. People have a lot to say when it comes to all manners of this truth. All right. But you don't have nothing to say when it comes to pedophilia, when it comes to these sodomites, when it comes to these harlots and these thotters of these harlots. All right. But we're the problem. Why? Because we're speaking the truth. And this truth 
is only for the elect of Israel. It's not for everybody. The majority of people are going to die. And that vision I had, as far as my eyes can see, and this is how I explain it every time. This is what I saw. I ain't got to lie to you, man. I don't need to lie. All right? But this is what I saw in my dream. Fire and sky. It was dark. It was a dark sky and fire. I didn't see not one building, not one house, not one tree, not one car. The fire was so high as far as my eyes could see. Now imagine you being on a helicopter and you're standing at the entryway of the helicopter and you're looking down in the middle of the ocean. You don't see no land, you don't see no trees, you don't see nothing but a big body of water as far as your eyes can see. But picture that being fire, but elevated higher in the air. That's what I saw in my vision. I saw a lake of fire. And all of you people who want to speak ill of the truth, who got a problem with the words of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai going to deal with you, man. Because you have a lot of cowards who claim to believe in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, but low key, they're not about this. They're not about this life, man. They're not about their brothers, man. Are you willing to lay your life down for one of your brothers? I am. I'm willing to lay my life down for brothers I haven't met because they are servants of Yahweh Shai. Okay? But you people who speak ill of the truth, you wouldn't even die for your own father or mother. Okay? You're mad at what we have. You're mad at the uh, connection that we have with our power. And you hope we're wrong, but we know that we're right. Okay? Your hope is useless. Okay? Second Peters chapter 2 and verse 12. But these, as natural brute beasts, but these, 2 Peter's chapter 2 and verse 12, but these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption so our people are like beasts what separates us from animals we have the law statutes and commandments so when you put aside the law statutes and commandments you're basically an animal if you don't believe in the heavenly father and his son you might as well be a murderer you might as well be a pedophile you might as well be a thief because there's no law we're all animals but guess what? We're under the covenant. That's what separates us from everybody else. Okay? But the problem is, our people want to be like everybody else. Okay? The Lord is tired of you. The Lord is tired of you Israelites rejecting him, man. Constantly he's crying out to you because he loves you. But really, he hates you, but he loves you. He hates you because you're wicked right now. But he loves you because you're still a child of the covenant. Okay? You're still a child of the promise. Okay? But you're like animals when you don't want to change your ways. When you don't want to repent and serve you, I will buy some of you, I Okay? Second Peters chapter 2 and verse 13. And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness. So just like we're hoping to receive a reward, all you scoffers and scorners, all you wicked, evil Israelites, all you Israelites hiding out, talking about you're coming out to the byways when the scriptures command us to be out here plainly. We can't be a light that's hiding. Okay, we have to be out here openly so people can see us, man, because we represent Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, we have no shame. If you have shame, pray on it. Okay? But if you pray on it and you still have shame or you don't feel the need to pray on it, you're probably not His because the Lord's sheep are going to show their faith by their works. 
All you wicked people, your reward is going to be death, destruction, famine, okay, being lost in your confusion. That's what you have to look forward to, okay? Let's go forward. And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that counted pleasure to riot in, in the daytime. Spots they are and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceiving, deceivings while they feast with you. And that's how it goes, man. You have a lot of brothers who come off like they're about this, like they're about Yahweh Shai, like they're about Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, but deep down inside, they're corrupt. I just saw 414. I saw uh, 93. I saw, uh, what was it? 80, what was it? 84, 156. Okay? A lot of spiritual numbers, man. But yeah, a lot of men, they can come around you, 48 again. They'll come around you like they're 441. <laughs> They'll come around you like they're your, your brethren, but deep down inside, they hate you, man. They hate the righteous spirit that's in you. They hate that Yahweh Shai love you, man. Okay? You have a lot of men who act like they with you, but they're willing to sell you out to get you killed. They're not about this ministry. They act like your brethren, but deep down inside, they are of Satan. They're, they're about the bag. They're about their own reputation. They're about their own name. Okay? That's what they're about. I don't come out here, you know, saying, uh, um, Explaining my spiritual situation to exalt myself. It just made me excited, man. That's all. I'm like, wow, you know, just what if? Because we're in this truth with with hope. And that's one of my hopes. And it's been hitting me more and more. Like, wow, what if? I, I wasn't always thinking like this. But as we come closer to the end, expect the Lord to show you more spiritual signs, man. Okay? Expect it. If you don't believe it, don't expect it. Okay? Having eyes full of adultery. And these are guys that be eating with you. Here it is, they're eating with you, but they lock, they, they lock an eyes on your wife. Okay? Here it is, they're eating with you, but they're serving other gods low-key, 414. Here it is, they're eating with you, but deep down inside, they don't really believe the message that they're that they're teaching alongside you. Okay? You might have helped this brother on low times when he was doing bad, gave him money, fed him, clothed him, okay? Gave him a place to sleep. And deep down inside, he wants to pop your wife. He wants to rob you. He wants to overthrow you. He wants to take your place. He hates the spirit that's on you. He's jealous of you. And he has more than you, however it comes. But the house of David is going to keep waxing stronger. I might have to get that. And I hope, I truly hope I'm of the house of David, man. Okay? Because deep down inside, I really do believe I've, I've walked with Yahweh Shai, man. And y'all will say, man, you bugged out. That's a bold statement. Am I bugged out for proclaiming I'm an Israelite? Am I bugged out for coming out here? And giving all thanks and praises unto a power that we've never seen with our eyes. Okay? How am I bugged out for believing I, I walked with our Lord, man? I hope so. I hope I'm of the righteous. I hope I'm of the house of David and not of the house of Saul. That would be horrible, man. That would suck. I don't want to be with you wicked ass niggas, man. I want to be far away from y'all. I don't want to have the same reward as you. Okay? Having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin. You have niggas, man, they, they just got to be demons. They can't help it, man. They, they got to lock eyes on your woman. They got to be jealous of you. They, they got to be uh, slandering your name. They have to be acting like they with you. Deep down inside, they twiddling their thumbs, 
waiting for the right moment to show you that they're Judas, to show you that they're Saul, okay, to, to show you that they're, they're Absalom, okay? Being unstable souls, in heart they have exercise with covetous practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way, and we're showing you the right way, and you constantly forsake it. And the reason is, you don't want you don't want the right way. Let me mark this right here, right quick, and I'm gonna come back to it. We're gonna go to the book of Jeremiah. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter eight, and verse three. And death shall be chosen rather than life, by all the residue, by all the residue of them that remain of this evil family which remain in all the places whether I have driven them, saith the Lord of hosts. So you Israelites all throughout the earth, the majority of you, you're going to choose death rather than life. You avoid this word. Okay? Let's go back to 2 Peter's chapter 2 and verse 15, which have forsaken the right way. Why? Because they want to choose death rather than life. Okay? And are gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosa, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. And that's what our people are doing. You're spiritually serving the spirit the, uh, the, the, uh, the spirit of Balaam, whether you believe it or not. Your Lord is Satan, okay? Your Lord is on the left-hand side. You don't serve the God of the Bible because you forsake the way that we're showing you. You hate how we talk. You hate how rough we are. You don't like being told about yourself. You don't like being rebuked, man. You don't like that we're we're bold in the spirit of Yahweh by Shemi Shah. You don't like that we we actually believe what we say. You hate that, man. That bothers you. And that's all right. 414. Who love the wages of unrighteousness which is death, but was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumb ass, see, the dumb ass is in the scriptures. You have a lot of men who are actually dumb asses. Yeah, you're a man per se, but not really. You're really a beast. Okay? But was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumb ass speaking with man's voice bad the madness of the prophet you dumbass niggas okay these are wells without water clouds that are carried with a tempest to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever okay so you're wells without water you can't hold water you're like a vessel that has a hole in it no matter how much water you pour into it the water is constantly going to leak out no matter how much we teach and preach unto you hard-headed Israelites, you're just not going to get it. That's why the Lord set aside his elect. This is about the elect of the nation of Israel. Okay? And that's facts, man, because it's backed up by the scriptures, man. And that's what it's about. Let's go to Psalms chapter 37. Psalms chapter 37 and verse 38. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. So all of you Israelites who got eyes full of adultery, all you Israelites who are in the spirit of Balaam, okay, you serving idols, you're not really about this, but you act like you are. You hate your brother without cause. You act like you're about this ministry. But you wouldn't lay your life down for your brother, man. Okay? You're not in the truth. The Lord ain't dealing with you, man. That's just what it is. Okay? You're going to be set aside with the non-believers. And you're going to be destroyed right along with them. Because, see, this world likes to talk about unity. Let's all come together and join hands. You're all going to join hands, but you're going to be destroyed together. Okay?
Let's read it again. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 37 and verse 38. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. So all you wicked Israelites, all you heathen, starting with Esau, Edom, you're all going to reach your doom. You're all going to be cut off because the Lord ain't dealing with you. If you're an Israelite and you don't repent, the Lord is going to destroy you right along with America. America will be destroyed. This landmass will be a lake of fire. Okay? And me being in Kansas, I'm in the middle of this damn place. Okay? I want to see it burn completely from the middle. I want to see it. Okay? That's what I want to see. I want to see the destruction of this place. There's another scripture that's coming to mind. Let me see if I can grab it. Proverbs 11 and 21. Though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished. So you could, you could join hand in hand with the wicked. But guess what? All you transgressors joining hand in hand, you're going to be destroyed together because what you're proving is that you're at unison with one another and two cannot walk together unless they be agreed. All right. That's why the Lord wants us to separate from this world because he ain't with this place, man. And if you're with this place, you're going to die with this place. OK. And that's a fact. Isaiah chapter one and twenty eight. And the destruction of the transgressors and of the sinners shall be together. And they that forsake the Lord shall be consumed. So all the Lord's enemies are going to be destroyed. They're going to be wiped away by thermonuclear missiles, man. That's why we, 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 we constantly scream. We complain to get our people to repent, turn back. We don't want to see you go through that. But you know what? We're so down with the Lord that if that's you, fuck it, man. We're just hoping that it's not us, because at the end of the day, if you don't want to do what you're supposed to do as an Israelite, you have no one to blame but yourself. That's self-destruction. That's fucking retarded, man. When you have the ability to do good and you don't, that's stupid. You have no one to blame but yourself. OK, and you can't say you didn't know because you have me and my brothers all throughout the world, not just here in Babylon, warning you. And you people constantly just drive by us. Wait, wait till you have a shy returns, man. Wait till he returns. You think he's going to be smiling? You really think he's going to be smiling? A lot of you probably think that, man. You think he's going to be happy? You think he's going to come tiptoeing and he's going to uh, hand out roses? He ain't going to take the kingdom. He's going to ask Esau for the kingdom nicely. You know, his, his men are fairy boys, right? This world is, is, is weird, man. It's off. All you people who are outside of the elect, you're going to be destroyed together. Okay? And you can't say, I'm being wicked because I'm telling you what the scriptures say. The destruction of the transgressors and of the sinners shall be together. And they that forsake the Lord shall be consumed. Consumed in what? Thermonuclear fire. You're going to be caught up in a lake of fire if that be your judgment. If you don't repent as a Negro, Latino, or Native American on your father's genetic line. And for you people who may go back to those people, but you don't have the luck. If your spirit resonates with this, you're an Israelite. But if you decide to come into this and then you decide, you know what? I ain't feeling it no more. The Lord's going to kill you too. OK. Period. Let's go to James. This is the book of James. James chapter four and verse four. Ye adulterers and adulteresses. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with the power? 
Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of the power. So if you're a friend of this world, you're going to be destroyed right along this world. And going back to that vision I had was seeing that lake of fire. I also saw a thermonuclear missile. It was right in front of me as I was standing in the doorway, but the whole missile was still intact. But it was uh, descending right in front of me into the fire in slow motion. And it looked like it just kept going and going and going and going. It looked like the missile didn't have an end, but for whatever reason, I didn't look up to see how long it was. I was looking straight at it and I was just watching it descend into the fire kind of slowly, but it didn't stop descending. Okay, it was that long. Okay, that's the, that's the uh, tool that the Lord's going to use along with the chariots to destroy this place. Now, the only thing I could think of with the missile being in slow motion is the fact that the scripture says this place will be destroyed in an hour. It's not going to be just one missile shot off. Those missiles are going to come raining down on this place for quite a while. So that missile going slow, it could represent, you know, that length of time that it's going to take for all the missiles to actually get shot off. It's going to take a minute, man. It ain't going to be no two second show. Boom, boom. The missiles are done and that's it. No, it's going to be horrible. The earth will shake. That's how bad it's going to be, man. Okay. The earth is going to shake. All right. So you have to separate. Don't don't get caught up with these people, man. Let these people be. Now, we still have to be respectful, be cordial, know how to carry yourself. You don't have to walk around being an asshole to people. We're not bullies, man. But separate from these people. Know who your friends are, and your friends are not anyone in this world. I don't care if it's your brother who you grew up with in the same house. If he's not in the truth, he is not your brother, man. Period. Okay? He is not your fucking brother. Your brother are the men in this truth. Okay? And I said it, man. All right? And I have a lot of siblings. Fuck all them. You brothers in this ministry, y'all my brothers, man. All right? That's how I feel. Y'all are my brothers. Ye adulterers and adulteresses. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with the power. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of the power. So if you're a friend of this world and that includes your damn family, you are an enemy of Yahweh by Shemi Shai. Now when it comes to your father and your mother, you honor them. If you have a, a brother and a sister, you have a decent relationship, I'm not saying you can't commune, but don't be spending long periods of time with them especially if they ain't living right because it's only a matter of time that the Lord get them unless they're waiting around for a later judgment. Okay. This ain't no joke. Let's go to first John. This is 1 John chapter 2 and verse 28. Uh, hold on. First John chapter 2 and verse 27. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teaching you of all things and is true and is no lie. And even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Have confidence in Yahweh by Shemi Shai. How do you do that? We have to keep doing the work. We have to keep doing the work. We have to keep being brotherly, man. Okay? We can't be looking at 
another brother with an evil eye? For what? Okay? We can't be out here with the spirit of trying to be that guy. For what? Okay? We're out here serving Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, man. And if you want to have that confidence, you have to abide to what the word says. So for you Israelites, you may wonder, okay, death and destruction is coming. What do I need to do? You need to abide in the word and have confidence that you doing so will get you delivered. Don't be caught up with these transgressors, with all these people in the world who are doing whatever they want to do. Let them be. Okay? And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. And that comes with doing the works. And that's not just teaching and preaching. That's your character, how you are in your day-to-day -day life when the cameras are off, when you're not around brothers, man. Who are you as a person? We have to live this truth, man. You have to be about this life. Okay? Let's go forward to 1 John 3 in verse 20. For if our heart condemn us, the power is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. So if we are condemned in our minds or whatever, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai is greater than we are. Even we can't condemn ourselves because at the end of the day, it's the Lord who justifies, man. Man don't justify nothing. It's Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai that justifies. So if you have times where you're condemned in your heart, ultimately you need to snap out of it and put your confidence in Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Okay? But those days can come where you're questioning whether or not you're a man of the Lord. That's okay. But you got to keep fighting. You got to keep that, that mentality of enduring regardless of those moments of feeling low in the spirit because Satan will try to come and hit you where it hurts because Satan wants to sift us. Okay, that's what Satan wants to do. First John 3 and 21, Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence toward, toward God. So that's why we need confidence in Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. So that our hearts are not condemned. So that we're not destroyed right along with these transgressors. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. So if we're doing what is pleasing in his sight, if we're keeping his commandments to the best of our ability, why should we be condemned in our mind with the destruction that's coming, feeling like, dang, well, what if I don't make it or fuck all that, man? If you're pleasing the Lord to the best of your ability, you're still fighting. You still have a fighting chance. OK, you throwing in the towel it's over for you. Any of us, man, we have to endure until the very end. That's the deal. There's no way around it. Until Yahweh Shai returns, we, we got to endure until the end. Okay? And this is his commandment. That we should believe on the name of his son, Yahweh Shai Mashiach. And love one another as he gave us commandment. And a lot of you brothers in this ministry, you're, you're pretending to love one another. But the love isn't there and that's speaking through the spirit. Okay? Now, in particular, if I feel a certain way about a brother, I will call you out. But overall, a lot of times I'll just say something through the spirit and it may not necessarily be aimed at any particular brother at that moment. Okay? And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him and he in him. And hereby we know that he abided in that he abided in us by the spirit which he had given us. So how do you know that the Lord is dealing with you? How do you know that you have a fighting chance of being delivered? You're abiding to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. You're keeping his commandments to the best of your ability and you fall short. Yeah, you sure do. 
but the heavenly father is going uh he's going to um pardon that through his son Yahweh Shai. Okay? So be that you keep your end of the bargain with doing the work. Do the work, man. This is our first love. Okay? What's that? Revelations 2 and 4. This is our first love, man. Let's touch on uh, 1 John chapter 4 In verse 6. We are of God. He that knoweth the power heareth us. He that is not of the power heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. See, the, the, the heavenly father, starting with the elders who taught us on down to the rest of the men, with the doctrine of Yahweh Shai, we have the spirit of knowing the truth. So we can understand, we, we know when someone's in error. We know when something don't sound right. We know when something is off. Okay? So as a person on the outside, you don't have a fighting chance. But let's say you're new and you're uncertain. If you believe in this word, and you're applying what the scriptures say to the best of your ability, what are your worries? Put your hope in the Lord. Put your hope in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Because he's coming to save us very soon. We're going home very soon. Okay? So keep that confidence in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Quit sleeping on yourself. Quit letting other men take your crown. Quit letting this world destroy your confidence. Quit letting so-called brothers destroy your confidence. Okay? Stop being your own worst enemy, man. And let the Lord work. And let the Lord do what he promised us. As long as we do what he asked of us. Okay? We are of the power. He that knoweth the power heareth us. So you know the Lord's dealing with you. If you hear us, if you hear the words of the Lord that we're speaking and teaching you, you understand it, you agree with it, the Lord is with you. Don't worry. Okay? He that is not of the power, heareth not us. So if you want to click off the video, you're bored, blah, 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 you're, you're, you're mocking us, you're scoffing us, that's because the Lord's not with you. Go on. Okay? Go on. I hope you can swim in a lake of fire. I don't know what type of suit you'll need for that because to swim in water, you'll need a bathing suit. So I guess to swim in them nuclear missiles, you'll need a baking suit. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. And the spirit of truth is a spirit that the majority of this world cannot obtain because only the elect can obtain the truth. Okay? You know what? Let's stay in John. Let's go to 2 John. Chapter 1. And verse. Second John chapter 1. And verse 7. For many deceivers are entered into the world. So there's many deceivers, man. You have to be aware of men who claim to be servants of the Lord. First and foremost, are they teaching you the right names? Are they reading the scriptures to you? Are they doing a whole bunch of blabbering or are they reading the scriptures to you? Because if they read the scriptures to you, that gives you the ability to discern. The Lord didn't say that. That's not what that says. Or, okay, that is what it says. But if someone's not bringing you the scriptures, how in the hell can you discern? Okay. That's why it's important that we bring out the scriptures and then other brothers, they'll get jealous and they'll become haters. And then they'll say, well, it's not about bringing out the scriptures, which it's not. But some brothers will say that just to hate because they don't teach like that. OK. This is about the word going out. This is about the words of Yahweh by Shum Yahweh Shai going out, not ourselves. OK, that's why I teach using the Bible. Okay?
For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Yahweh Shai Mashiach is coming to flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Anyone who doesn't believe in Yahweh Shai, you don't think he existed, you don't think he performed miracles, you're, you're an idiot. You're an antichrist. You don't even matter, man. You're just written into the story because you're a part of it. But you don't even matter. There is no righteous reward for you. Okay? Righteousness is going to reign forever. Wickedness will be done away with. You'll feel dumb later on. And that later on is sooner than you think. Luck to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. So we have to luck to ourselves. We have to examine ourselves, make sure that we are on point. Because we understand all these transgressors, the majority of people are going to be destroyed together. The majority of people are going to die really, really gruesome and brutal deaths. That's what the Bible says. But we have to look within ourselves, make sure that we're on point, make sure that we're pleasing the Lord to the best of our ability, and we don't get too high-minded and over ourselves like we made it already. We didn't make it yet. We still got to fight. We still got a job to do. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 27 in verse 9. Let me see. That's not it. Let me try Psalms. This isn't what I want, but it's a good scripture. Uh, Psalms chapter 27 and verse 9. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not. Neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. And that comes with what? Being confident. And that confidence comes through what? Doing the work of the Lord. Doing what the Lord asked of you to do. Because we have to show our end of the bargain. We have to show our faith by our work. We're not going to, you know, ice skate into the kingdom with no opposition. Second Ezra is chapter 9 and verse 7. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith whereby ye have believed. So if you believe, you want to be saved in reality, you're going to put in the work. You are going to show the effort. Okay? And in order for you to do that, you have to fear Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And in order for you to fear Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, he has to put that spirit inside of you. This is the book of Baruch, chapter 4, in verse 6. Ye were sold to the nations, not for your destruction. So the Lord allowed us to go into slavery because we broke the law, statutes, and commandments. But he's calling us back to repent. Okay? But check this out. Ye were sold to the nations, not for your destruction, but because ye moved the power to wrath, ye were delivered unto the enemies for you you provoked him that made you by sacrificing unto devils and not to the power so seeing that our people constantly go off our people constantly go against the lord what happens our people constantly get afflicted our people constantly get persecuted okay this is the book of You know what? Let me um I'll hold that. I'll just go back to Baruch. That's what I'll do. This is the book of Baruch. This wind, man. It's not too bad though, but uh, this is the book of Baruch, chapter 3, and verse 6. So like I was saying earlier, 
You have to fear Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. That's what keeps you examining yourself. That's what keeps you on point. But the Lord has to make you fear him. Okay? The majority of people don't fear because the Lord wants to destroy them and make them fear by force. We fear willingly. We're hoping to be delivered, man. Baruch chapter 3 and verse 6. For thou art the Lord our power, and thee, O Lord, will we praise. And for this cause thou hast put thy fear in our hearts to the intent that we should call upon thy name. So we call upon the true names. Why? Because we fear. All you Israelites out there who ain't calling on the true names and you know what the names are, you don't fear the Lord. That's why you're playing with his name like that. Because if you really knew who he was, you wouldn't play with his name. You wouldn't play with his reputation like that. Okay? But the Lord has you doing what you're doing because the deceived and the deceiver are his. But us, we have to make sure we're on point and the Lord allows us to do that by putting fear in our minds towards him. And for this cause, thou hast put thy fear in our hearts to the intent that we should call upon thy name and praise thee in our captivity. For we have called to mind all the iniquity of our forefathers that sin before thee. Okay, so the Lord has put that fear within our hearts. That's why I come out here and I stand in boldness. It's not because I'm Mr. Tough Guy. I'm flesh and blood. But I'm out here because the Lord has put that fear in me. And that fear has also sparked up a, 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 a willingness to stand in great boldness for him. Okay? Where are we at with time? This is the book of Luke. Chapter 5. I got to wrap it up because uh, my camera will stop recording after a while. This is Luke chapter 5 and verse 32. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So you Israelites, look, you still have a chance to repent. I don't know if the elect's been sealed or not. Some men may believe it, but it's not up to us to decide that. It's up to the Lord. And as long as we're still out here, as long as we're still able to teach, then clearly the doors of repentance is still open. Don't let no one tell you different. Yahweh by Shimei was shy is who decides who comes in and who does not. Don't let no man tell you you can't come into this ministry. It's too late. No man decides that. Yahweh by Shimei was shy is the one deciding who comes in, who goes out. Okay, we don't decide that. Okay, we're just out here to warn you, but really we're hoping that you repent. That's what we want to see. Destruction's coming. We're telling you, you will be put to death if you don't repent. But overall, we want you to repent, man. We want to see you do better. But we understand the majority of you, the Lord has a controversy with you. He is mad at you. He does not want to let it go until he destroys you. Speaking to you Israelites. Okay? You heathens don't have a chance. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Let's go to Acts. We're calling sinners to repentance. And that ain't talking about everybody. Acts 5 and 31. Him hath the power exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior. For to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin. So we're calling you Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, according to your agnet and paternal line, to repent, turn back to your power, turn back to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, so that things can go well with you. Because if you don't, you are going to die. I'm going to close it with this here. We're going to keep doing this for as long as it takes. But it's clear as day. It's not much longer. It's not much longer. We don't know the day. We know we in the season. Because the Lord has revealed that much to us. 
Proverbs 13 and 13. Whoso despiseth the word, you don't want to repent. Whoso despiseth the word, you want to scoff, you want to mock us, right? You don't see us as the men of the Lord. Oh, we're just average guys off the street. We're just your cousin. We're just your brother. We're just your old work associate that you used to work with. We're not popular. No one listens. That's fine. Okay? That's totally fine to feel that way. Whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed. But he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. And that's the message. You Israelites, you're going to repent or you're going to die. And we're coming into the time where the Lord is wrapping it up, man. Yahweh Shai is at the door. I can feel him, man. You can feel Yahweh Shai is at the door. I see chariots all the time. Just showing you the Heavenly Father is sending them to give that report. Okay? And you know they're watching. The scriptures tell you how the eyes of the Lord are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. So I'm going to go on ahead and wrap it up. I'm thankful to be able to do this once again for our Lord, Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai. So Lord willing, this lesson, it was simple and it was edifying. And I'm going to give all thanks and praises unto our power, the power of Israel, not the power of any other nation. And what's his name? Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai. By Shemwa Rakak with Dash. Shalom, I'm out. DTA. The prophets are back, man. Believe it or not.